Welcome back to Your Hammock. I am Hannah from Tula Bean Mindful Movement. And today's practice is definitely up a notch from my previous videos here on my channel. So we want to be able to know that we are comfortable with the hammock, with the stability of it, the height of it. We're going to be working with the hammock at that high level height and we're finding that the fabric is at hip flexor height when you're grabbing the fabric at hip uh, width. So we're starting actually on the floor. We'll be building quite a bit of strength through core and legs today and then also getting some nice juicy stretches into the legs as well. down on the floor and we'll bring the hips roughly under plumb line that center point between the two pillars of fabric and you could either start with the feet to the earth or I'm going to bring my feet in so I want to bring one foot in I sort of lift the hips a little bit and Charlie Chaplin turn the toes out and the same thing on the other side I'm not quite under plumb line so I'm going to do a little shuffle here like a worm so I've hooked my feet, turning the feet out, and we're just going to pause here with the legs bent. I quite like to bring hands to thighs. You could have hands on belly or wide. But let's just take a pause here, three collective breaths. Just breathe your exhale out here, in through the nose, out through the mouth. If you'd like to close the eyes, you can, in through the nose. Out through the mouth, in through the nose, out through the mouth. So from here, just noticing how it feels to try to extend the legs and then bend the knees. At the moment, I have the hips still to the earth, super gentle, just sort of feeling like, okay, yep, I feel like I'm roughly under plumb line with the hips. I feel like the hammock is at a height that is not too challenging for this. Okay, so after you've done that a few times, you're going to choose where you want to bring the arms. It could be that you're going to spread them. I quite like that shape, but you might feel that you need palms facing down, pressing down beside you. You'll choose sort of what feels more supportive for you, especially when we're beginning with this. I want to draw the shoulder blades in towards one another so that I feel strong in my back body. We're going to extend the legs, press down into the ankles, squeeze the glutes and lift the hips and then gently roll down through the hips and bend the knees like a little frog. So we'll go through that a couple more times. Lift the hips as you extend the legs and then roll back down, bending through the knees. Can you draw some movement with breath now? So if you're not already, think about how you'd like to link movement to breath. I like to inhale here, bend the knees, and then extend, exhaling. Inhaling, softening back down. You might find that actually you prefer the opposite breath work, and that's okay. I would not say that it is right or wrong either way. Just see if you can use your breath as your leader of the movement, not the, not the movement as the leader of your breath. A yogi mentality there. It all starts with the breath. All right, so you might want a little pause, a little breather. And then the next time that we go ahead and extend, we're going to see if we can keep our hips high and bend the legs into this shape, little froggy shape. So we're going to keep legs, uh, hips lifted and then do some froggies in the air. So extend the legs, squeeze the glutes and then see if you can keep your hips high as you bring the heels in and bend the knees. Could you do that for about five rounds? Some of you might do more, some of you might do less, squeezing the glutes keeping the toes turned out so you're safe, secure, and locked. Great little glute, <laughs> glute max, glute mead, in outer thigh work out there. All right, extend the legs, and then soften back down. Well done. 
Next time we go ahead and extend the legs, you're going to keep pushing your right ankle into the fabric, point the toes perhaps if you'd like, right ankle stays in the fabric and then see if you can release the left and I'm going to invite you to keep the knee pulling in towards you, that leg is bent for now. If you feel like you've got it, you can extend the leg and push down more firmly into the fabric and lift the hips. And then go ahead and release that foot into the fabric. Could you add a little froggy in the middle? And then extend the legs, swap it over other leg now. I'm going to invite you to keep the knee bent. If you feel strong, supported, extend the leg, push down into the fabric. Can you lift the hips higher, shoulder blades together, bring the foot into the fabric. Let's go for our little froggy in the air and then extend. Can we do two more rounds? If you need to, lower the hips down. So I'm gonna start with that first leg again. Lift, extend, bring the leg into the fabric. Little froggies in between. Extend, we're halfway there. Bring the other ankle out. Maybe you start with the knee bent, then go for an extension. Bring the foot into the fabric. Little froggy, we've got one more to go either side. If you need to pause, lower the hips down. Bring the ankle out that we started with. Lift, extend the leg perhaps. Bring the ankle into the fabric. Little froggy, extend. And we're going again for the last side. Lift, bring the foot back into the fabric. Little froggy, well done. Extend the leg and roll it back down. Bend the legs. Here I invite you to release your feet. Bring the knees in towards your chest and a little sway from side to side. If you wanted to, you could even drop the legs all the way down, turning the head perhaps. A little spinal twist on the earth and then swap it over to the other side. And then drawing the way back to center. So <clears throat> you could try to rock and roll your way up. If you feel like you can, you'll grab the fabric already above you and then roll up to sit. I'm gonna grab the fabric um, from underneath, pull uh, my hands together here, pull down, press the feet under plumb line, and then extend the legs and push your hips further back. Bend through the knees, feet at hip width. So bring your hands underneath, bring the hands forwards of plumb line under the fabric, and then bring your hands up through the center together, and then turn your hands away towards each pillar and you've taken a little wrist wrap, interlace the fingers. And then you'll play with how far back you want your hips. I'm gonna probably pull, push my hips further back, but I'm just extending through the arms, hanging out in the fabric. Head is going to drop forwards. I'm gonna just do a little further shift back. And feet can be further forwards and just giving your weight to the fabric here so that the shoulder blades flare behind you. One more breath. And then from here, bring the hips a little further forwards if you've gone too far back. And a little further forwards, roughly on the plumb line. I've gone a little behind. Feet are gonna go wide. I've released the grip of my hands just for a little bit of blood flow there. Just holding on to each pillar as we extend the hands forwards. So don't worry about the legs being super wide, but could you flex through the feet, turn those toes back towards the knee, and then push your hands forwards here. If you still have the hands interlaced, go ahead and release the interlace of the fingers and then go for a little sway either side. You'll notice that one knuckle will draw further forwards than the other. 
And as you do that, notice if one knee wants to bend as you sway towards it. Notice if one sit bone wants to lift. And it's not that I'm inviting you to be poker still. It's that I'm inviting you to just observe. Observe the body's movement here. See if you can be with what's going on with my hands in this movement. What's going on with my left leg in this movement? What is going on with my breath in this movement? And then coming back to stillness, to center. And we're gonna roll ourselves up through center. Go ahead and release the fabric. So we'll swing the feet behind us. We're gonna to come to kneeling in front of plumb line or just underneath plumb line with the hips roughly. <clears throat> so into a tabletop shape, I tend to be just a fraction forwards of plumb line here with the hips. So do look back, notice where the hips are in relation to the base of that fabric hanging and then maybe come just a fraction forwards of it. Again, just look over towards your right shoulder. We're gonna hook our right ankle into the fabric. So just see where it is, and now look forwards. We're gonna see if we can do that movement of bringing the ankle into the fabric without looking. So it's not a big sort of swing action. We're gonna to try to be very mindful about that movement. So, okay, that's where my fabric is. Let's see how it goes. So you might start to kick the heel into the buttock. It's your right ankle. Maybe you can just feel it, the fabric slightly. Then you wanna bring the foot slightly to the side <laughs> and see, no, I didn't get it. And see whether we can bring our foot through the center. So it's a little bit of a challenge there, trying to use our proprioception, using other body elements to find our way into the fabric rather than always relying just on our eyes, for example. So once you've got your foot in the fabric, you've got the foot flexed. So if you have the pointed toes, you're gonna to come straight out of the fabric, keep the foot flexed. And then from here, see if you can push back the weight onto the forearms so that your hips drop into your left heel on the ground and just play with extending and bending the leg that's in the fabric for a few rounds. Noticing again what feedback you might be getting from the body with this extension and flexion. And it might be that you'd like to linger in a certain shape. Maybe you're enjoying extending the leg. Maybe you're enjoying keeping the leg bent and pulling downwards. Find a place that you want to just pause for an extra breath here. And then from here, go ahead and come back to tabletop shape with your upper body, keeping that ankle still in the fabric. We're going to bring the, the knee that's on the ground, we're going to bring that foot by the same wrist. So for you guys on the screen, it's gonna be your left foot coming towards your left wrist. Now you're gonna press your foot into the fabric to help you get there. So as we press our hands down, press the foot into the fabric, start to tuck the toes on the earth, hover the knee, and then press really firmly into the fabric as you lift the hips and pull left foot forward so that the toes come close towards that wrist. And then from here, can you come up onto your fingertips and extend the leg in the fabric? Look a little bit further forwards. Your belly may be slightly propped by the thigh as you try to press that ankle away from you behind you into the fabric. Can you keep left knee on top of that left ankle? Take a little twist here. Right hand to the earth, left hand to the thigh or towards the ceiling, your choice whether you take the gaze up or not. And then slowly let that hand down to the earth. Fire up the muscles in the standing leg that's on the floor. If you want to, you could have hands on thigh or start to press down, rise up, 
thin through the leg that's in the fabric. If, you, if you're comfortable, reach the arms up. So we're gonna sway back and forth a little bit here. You could always tap the hands to the earth. You could always have your hands coming down onto that thigh, or if you're okay with it, extend the arms back as you extend the leg back. See if you can sweep through that for sort of anywhere between three and five rounds. Now I'm always pressing down with my foot into the fabric to help for stability, support, strength in through this little flow here. Back and forth. Remembering that the breath is leading your movement. Come all the way up to stand. Open up through the arms. Lift the hands up. Now it might be that the fabric's gonna be right there, but it could be that you're standing a little too far forwards a plumb line, but I'm gonna kick my heel in towards my body and I know that the fabric's somewhere quite close. If you know that you're quite far forwards, just check out where the fabric is. Do not grab the fabric right away. You wanna find that your standing leg is as close to plumb line as possible. So see if you can do just a little hop to find your way the roughly there. And try it again, fabric behind your body, you're trying to grab. Now I've got a reverse grip. Hands are reaching up, thumbs to the inside, fingers to the outside. Once you've grabbed your fabric, then you can hop until you find plumb line. We're not gonna go into full dancer's pose. We're actually gonna lean our weight back, really adding on to that quad stretch here. So this is where we're heading with this one today. So I've lent my hips back into the fabric. At the moment, my knees are close together, but if it feels like you could go there, still with that reverse grip, start to bend a little through your standing leg and bend through the leg in the fabric. So we're really adding on to that quad stretch here. 1990 variation that feels comfortable for you to hold. I'm really feeling this today. Been starting some deeper, weight training activities in my own body lately. <laughs> so certainly feeling this in my quads and glutes. All right, pull the weight back to center. And then we're gonna slowly roll down to get the hands to the earth. So chin towards the chest, still got that foot in the fabric all the way to the earth. Walk the hands forwards, drop the knee to the earth and then bring the ankle out. Let's come through to child's pose or you could cat cow on the ground, maybe a little sway of the hips. We're gonna do the same little sequence on the second side. Okay, so coming back into tabletop, we're back onto all fours. We're gonna do that little challenge again, seeing if we can avoid actually looking over our shoulder as we do it. And of course do that at some point but we're just giving ourselves a little proprioception challenge here so look over the shoulder find where the fabric is then come back to bring the eyes forwards shift the weight into the opposite leg now that you haven't worked kick the heel into the buttock and we see nope <laughs> whether we can find the center of the fabric with your left ankle this time once you've caught the fabric with your ankle, we'll come down onto the forearms, we'll drop the hips back towards that right heel and then start to extend through the leg in the fabric and bend. So you do that a couple of times here, noticing what feedback you're getting through your hip flexes, through the groin, the quads, glutes, and the outer thigh the hips in general, maybe even the lower back. And then you might like to linger somewhere that feels nourishing, nurturing for you, either with the leg long and straight or bent. And then we lift ourselves up onto the hands, keeping the ankle in the fabric. Check out where you're gonna place your foot. So. The right foot is gonna be placed roughly where that right hand is. We'll probably aim for the toes to come just behind the wrist. There's a couple of things happening together here. Coordination, little core 
pressing down into the fabric with the ankle and lifting the hips. You'll also tuck the toes on the ground, hover the knee, press into the fabric as you hop the foot forwards. Once you've found the foot to the earth, walk the hands closer towards that right foot and extend your hips back, trying to align right ankle on top of that right knee, extending the leg back behind you in the fabric. See if you can pause here. And then we'll take a twist. So it'll be a left hand staying to the earth, right hand either towards your hip or towards the sky. Choose where you'd like to take the gaze. And then slowly lower that hand to the earth. So we're gonna see if we can come up to stand. You might bring your hands on top of your thigh as you do this. If you can, without, slowly lifting up, really strong through the standing leg as you then come to stand and draw the knee in towards you. We'll sweep the leg back and forth as the heart lowers. You could touch down to the ground or bring your hands back onto that front thigh. But we're gonna see if we can go between three and five rounds. Moving with breath here. And not worrying about keeping up with me. Just seeing whether you can move as smoothly as can be. Eyes focus onto a point in front of you helps with stability. Pressing down into both of your feet. So both the ankle that's in the fabric, the foot that's on the earth spreading the weight across those legs. So next time we come to stand, let's come and meet there. Now you might wanna just see whether the fabric's nearby behind you, it may not be. So it could be that you need to hop the standing leg a little more to plumb line. Try to do this really slowly. So see if you can avoid flailing around. This wants to be slow and controlled movement, mindful movement. I'm gonna hop my standing leg a little bit more to center that I believe is center. So a little bend into that leg, eyes are focused. And now I'm gonna see if I can find the fabric with that reverse grip. Palms face up, thumbs to the inside, fingers to the out. Once I've found the grip of the fabric, then I'll hop again until I find plumb line. And you'll just hop and swing to plumb line because you're holding onto the fabric. So underneath plumb line, we wanna to start to push the hips back. I've got the standing leg straight here and I'm just pushing the hips back a couple of inches for now, keeping the thighs quite close together, still holding onto the fabric here. And then if you feel like you can go there, bend through the standing leg and bend through the back leg as well. So it becomes a bit of a variation of 1990. So this is a powerful quad stretch. You've got the foot in the fabric flexed so that you're sort of really pushing down and back here. Definitely feeling some lengthening going on through the front of that thigh and quad. Feeling quite tender in my own body today. And then we want to pull the weight back. And then from here, we'll start to release the hands and roll our way down towards the earth. Once you've found hands to the ground, walk them forwards, drop the knee and release the ankle. And we'll come through to child's pose. Your choice, whether you'd like to end your practice today lying in Shavasana on the floor, or perhaps you're taking your way into the fabric, into your cocoon. And I'll guide you to your cocoon so you know where you're going, if that is your choice. Coming to stand. Turn to face the front of the fabric, grabbing one edge, sweep it out like a flag. Turn to face the front as you bring your thumbs behind you into that front edge behind your back. Take six handfuls, two, three, four, five, and six. Step back under plumb line. Look up, make sure that you're stood there. Elbows to the inside of the fabric. Press down firmly as you releve, lift one knee and scoop the fabric behind the back of the knees. Hands rise, taking the back edge, creating these big, wonderful angel wings of fabric, wrapping it around the body as you roll your way down. 
your choice how you lie back. Could be arms crossed over the heart, could be soles of feet together, knees wide like a butterfly. At this point, just taking any last little maneuvers so that you can really begin to let the body and the mind rest. Join the fabric, slowly swaying if you like, before we bring the feet out through the front edge, catching the fabric behind the back of the knees, grabbing the fabric high in the back edge to pull your way up. And coming through to a little floating child's pose. Coming through to sit tall in your fabric, Reach the arms up, grab the fabric firmly to pull down and gently land your feet. Let's pause, a hand to heart, a hand to belly. Thank you for joining today's practice and have a wonderful rest of your day. Thank you for watching this video and I hope you enjoyed it. Please don't forget to like it below, subscribe to my channel and hit the bell icon. Not only will this keep you up to date with my offerings, but will keep content like To The Being free and accessible to all.